you still can. Leave now before Master finds you. Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Be gone with you. <laughs> Hello everyone, happy Halloween. Well, today's not Halloween, we're shooting this in advance because this year marks the 50th anniversary of The Exorcist from 1973, directed by William Freakin, who recently passed away this year. Dad, what do you think of The Exorcist, and do you think it's still scary after all these years later? I think The Exorcist is still one of the scariest movies out there. Absolutely. When we were rewatching this, I'm like still like horrified and freaked out by this film for how you have this... Uh, this innocent girl who was possessed by the devil for no reason. Well, only that for its time, no one had ever seen like like horror films like that where it was like about the devil possessing somebody. Well, not really sure that. Well, I don't know really that they say this is the first one. But I can't really think of a horror film prior to that. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was. Yeah, uh, I, I it was certainly the first one that I had ever seen. Right, obviously, especially at that time, like this was groundbreaking for horror for its time in the '70s. It was. Mm -hmm. This wasn't like the Universal Monsters or Hammer or uh, or Psycho, etc. Or like all the psychological or the ghosts or not even William Castle like uh, horror films after that that time. Mm -hmm. People like wanted to see, because it was the 70s, people wanted to see color uh, graphic horror films or mm -hmm. more of like they were more scared of them than what they had seen prior to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you said that you saw this when you were a teenager at the time when it came out. Yeah, the movie came out, uh, and I was in high school, and right. uh, some friends and I, uh, we we took the bus into Manhattan, right? And we saw it at the Paramount Theater, right? Uh, and it was a real experience. I'm sure it was. And you also said some guy like the opening shot, like shouted out, like "Where's the uh, or?" Well, in the beginning of the movie, when we you see Max von Stowe's Max von Sydow. Sydow is uh, out in excavating and in Iraq in Iraq and somebody yelled out skip this stuff <laughs> well the, if he, I guess he was not really a uh, film analysis like we are like well, how he, he wanted to get right to the to the scary stuff well the <laughs> opening does have a, have a have a reason it's it's a foreshadow like what's to come against uh, of course uh, him and the devil like later on and uh, mm -hmm. You know, like the movie like definitely starts out a little bit like mellow, where Ellen Burstein and her daughter, you know, like the the mother and daughter are uh, bonding, and how, mm -hmm. and also I guess the father's not in the picture, and she's basically filling in both roles, father and uh, mother, at the same time, and right, mm -hmm. yeah, and then all of a sudden when she, you know, like starts like cursing, getting possessed, or saying all this like nonsense stuff that a kid would not say, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I think the the main. Uh, reason why this is scary is the possibility that this can happen to anybody. That's true. And you have a, a sweet little innocent, innocent girl, girl, yeah, who's done like no harm to anybody. It's like you know, like kids, mm -hmm. kids are innocent. What have they done? Nothing right. wrong. And but mm -hmm. this girl is possessed by the devil for uh, no reason. Besides, besides like that about like, this film about being about exorcism or. Uh, a beat where people think of it as like a pro Catholic film, it's like much more that it's about fate, like guilt, and also uh, Catholicism too, and uh, also like how like people like lose their faith and like because you see how Father Caris's character throughout the film is losing faith in God and the Church because mm -hmm. of how mm -hmm. times were changing at that time than what he was used to. Right. Yeah, and being Catholic, uh, yeah. there was a priest that I knew that had actually been at exorcisms. Right. And, uh, Interesting. He, you know, this, the things that, of course, that were done in the movie were exaggerated. Right. It was all like make believe. That's not like it's, right. it's all fiction. But still, uh, you know, these were actual events where it was suspected that someone was possessed by right. the devil. Right. And there is a protocol that the Catholic Church follows in right. order to perform an exorcism. Right. Well, throughout the entire film, like when, you know, Doc, like no matter what doctor she went to, they just could not, uh, there's no medicine for the devil, not that they're aware of. And the only solution to this was performing an exorcism. Mm -hmm. You know, you root for uh, Ellen Burstein's uh, character to like, you know, get her daughter back. And right. Yeah. 
And Father, not that Father Karras would not have done. He just does not know, like, how, like, if this could, you know, I guess there's just, like, no, uh, I guess they just did not know they had the answers or really was the, uh, but I don't know, like, it was, like, seeing the way, like, she was acting and behaving and also, like, uh, like, like, with a little, with, with, with the character, when you think, when she doesn't, when she thinks about it, with the character daughter Reagan say those words, what the devil was saying, exactly, when you think about it, that had been more than enough in a sign. Mm hmm. Or, like, also when uh, she, when the devil's, like, you know, brining her body up and down, side to side, or mm -hmm. twisting her head backwards and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and also, like, that opening shot, like, at the house when they thought it was, like, mice in the air. But that, that again, a sign that, that, that the devil was coming right through the, uh, the house. Right. Yeah. And I also like uh, it's it's definitely still like a, a horror film that's still like being talked about and going strong in like today's uh, modern day horror fans uh, the extras. I also feel like I've noticed that it seems like a lot of like people have tried to like copy what the Exorcist was too to like mm -hmm. you know because of like how very effective and scary this was on like demon and exorcism. But and there's that's I don't know whether you would say that's sort of a subgenre exorcism films, uh, but you know nothing definitely doesn't top this because I thought. Remember when we saw Pope's Exorcist? Yes. I thought that was like, eh, it was okay, but I just did not, I mean, I, didn't, I really did not know anything about that, that character, that event of like, uh, mm -hmm. like Catholic history and stuff. And In 1974, there was a black exploitation film called Abbey. This is a rare DVD to find due to being out of print due to like Warner Brothers filing lawsuits against them for making a ripoff to The Exorcist. The only way you can get this movie are bootlegs at conventions, or you can watch it on YouTube for free. The Exorcist of Emily Rose is considered the real true story behind The Exorcist. Yeah, I, I um, you know, I, I guess, you know, you look at the way that the, this movie is filmed, and it's not filmed in a way that it's uh, one um, gory event after another. Right. Or uh, it's it's done in a way that uh, the characters are integrated very well into the story, right? And some of the way things are shot, um, which are different, you know, than say what happened in the book, like the uh, the dresser bureau moving and you know uh, things like that. Uh, the way they're done are very effective, yeah, uh, and it really builds, you know, to a climax, right? So. Uh, the climax being, you know, with the exorcism yes. being performed by Max von Sydow and, and uh, Jason yeah. Miller, uh, the two priests in the room, you know, with, with the possessed little girl. Right. And also, like, how, like, the devil's playing, you know, tricks, especially Father Karras, who had recently um, lost his uh, mother. You know, she was old, and he feels, like, guilt, grief, and regret. Wish he could have done more. Right. But sadly, like, for what... Like, you know, I've like seen the scene, like, at her apartment. She didn't look like she was in the best of, like, condition. It looked like she was, like, on her way out and how... Mm -hmm. And I guess it was also, like, hard for, like, to let her go because I guess they had a close bond, but... And also, I think he should understand... That's life, though, for, you know, that's... Right. That we're all gonna die at some point. And also, like, how, like, the dream sequences, again, it's like, it's, uh... You know, the devil's playing tricks on him of, right. like... Mm -hmm. you know where it's like she's like thinking that his mother's putting guilt in but it's not it's really the devil that's messing with his mind right yeah he was a great character in the film probably the best uh part really had a great like character art and personality to uh mm -hmm. and like i said before he's a guy who's like losing his faith in like god and church he's like remember the part when he's at the bar talking to a friend of his and he goes i want out of this he goes this just is not the way to go anymore like being a priest mm -hmm. yeah yeah. And then I think we should mention the voice of Reagan, right. uh, who was Mercedes McCambridge. Right, which I had no idea that that was a female. I thought it was. Yeah. It sounded like a, very convincing to me. Yeah, she's a she's an old time actress. Um, she did win an Oscar. Right, um, I'm blanking out on the movie. That I'll she just won uh, leave it leave it in the script. You know, like in mm -hmm. the. Uh... The movie my dad was referring to was All the King's Men, where she won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. But um, uh, she actually smoked cigarettes uh, right. in order to deepen her voice. That explains why I was so convincing. Uh, that <laughs> and uh, she really gave a great performance with her voice. Yeah. No, that, everyone does a great job. Like Linda Blair does an yeah. amazing mm -hmm. job, and so mm -hmm. does Ellen Burstein. And uh, 
And even like Max von Stowe's character is not like a big, big part, but he still always does the best job no matter like what he does. Like, uh, mm-hmm. but he was always a great actor to watch no matter what he did. Like he was, oh, well, despite I know the Se- the Seventh Seal, which is one of his well known films, and um, uh-huh. I liked his performance and character. I didn't care for the film as much, despite how it's considered one of the most. I respect it for like film history and film like classes, but. But it's been a while since I've seen it. Just a film I didn't get really into that much. But that's a different topic. And also... Well, I, I think that um, Max von Sydow is a uh, testament to uh, practical effects. Yeah. Because uh, the aging makeup that was used I n- here... I didn't, I didn't realize that it was aging... It was make. I thought that's what he really... Right. And so did everybody else. Right. And so it kind of affected his career a little bit because everybody thought he was much older right, than he right, right. was. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought to myself that, uh, because, of like, you know, again, like when you see, like, the older Hollywood actors, like, when they mm-hmm. were younger, then you fast forward 20 years later when they were older, they were, like, looking like they were already 80 or 70 years old because of all the years of smoke. And I thought, I guess that's what. Yeah. But no, that was just, like you said, makeup on Max mm-hmm. Monster to make him look like he was some. I mean, they're really clear about how old he is. Well, maybe I'm going to guess maybe 60s, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, what's his name, too, was in it, who played that guy in a, t- a hat and mustache from 12 Angry Men. Oh, yeah, Lee J. Cobb. Yeah, which I, I didn't even... Well, I, for, I saw this first. I saw 12 Angry Men later because at that time when this movie came out, this was during the new wave of Hollywood and what people were not used to at that time with Hollywood, what was coming new. Mm-hmm. You know, the Hayes Co. was long gone. Hollywood was able finally to like do what they wanted with like adding like sex, nudity, violent gore, and cursing in movies at that time, mm-hmm. or even like I said, make a horror movie like this. Yeah, there were, uh, you know, there was some controversy because uh, William Peter Blatty, the author of yes, the book, yes, and William Friedkin disagreed on the ending of the movie. Right, right. Did you ever read the book to the movie? Yes, I did. Was it? You know, it's funny because. I seem to get like mixed reactions on the book. Some people say the movie's better than the book. I, I guess it really depends on who. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the movie was better than the book. But right. The book was also very good. Right. Um, I haven't read it, you know, since right. I was in high school. But, right. But I remember it being very good. Right. Well, William Bradley had like a really interesting career as like an author, and he also really worked on a lot of Hollywood films, especially how he directed. Um, the uh, the third Exorcist film, you know, mm-hmm. which I'll talk yeah, about. I didn't uh, even know that. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, even though that's, I, I don't want to get ahead or something, right. but mm-hmm. we'll talk that in a little bit in a little while. So I also want to talk about too about um, also a little bit about like, this film is also considered a curse film because remember we watched that um, yes, on Shutter the Curse documentary about making the Exorcist with like certain production problems, mechanical issues, and also how like also. Like Linda Blair's career not like going anywhere after this. How like, she did like uh, exploitation films. She didn't have like the career that she would have wanted to have had after right. when she did The Exorcist. She was typecast and also going from an innocent girl to a uh, drunken alcoholic and a drug addict too mm-hmm. and a cokehead. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess since we're on this topic right now, I guess can we talk about when we met Linda Blair? Sure. Yeah. Well, actually, here's before that. We have a cousin who actually knows Linda Blair uh, personally. They are uh, mutual friends for a common interest. And uh, we met her a few years ago in uh, 2019. I'll admit, she wasn't really on my list of highly people I really wanted to meet desperately. But because my friend, who I told you about so many times, Bill Burns, who is a uh, professor at Suffolk County Community College, loves The Exorcist. And I got him a signed autograph of uh, Linda Blair from The Exorcist as a thank you for all the things he did for me when I used to go there. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was my reason. But the only thing that was annoying how she was there like so late and then OCD about like making sure all of her pictures were aligned in order. And... Yeah, but still, she was nice. She, she was. She, she was. was she, she was very friend. gracious. Yeah, she was. It was she nice was. to meet her. Yeah, yeah, it was very nice to meet her. I'm, wasn't desperate. But I was just glad I met her for that reason. That was like worth it, despite the long hour wait I had. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Would I meet her again? Eh, I don't think so. That's all right. Once, once was enough. And also, she signed, she signed this uh, DVD right here, saying uh, to John, "Sweet dreams, Linda Blair." It's kind of, kind of like weird for her, her like writing that, especially like the, the the lines that she says in this movie. Well, I think that she did that because uh, being. 
uh, just a little bit playful, you know, right. because <laughs> yeah, because of the the horror of the Exorcist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> I guess that just shows that she's not the devil in real life. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. Originally, I wanted my friend uh, William Burns to be in this video, giving his thoughts on the Exorcist. Back in 2016, he did a uh, Exorcist review with my friend Christian on his YouTube channel. Link in the description for that. I read that when she made this movie, like with. Well, you know, it's funny how like, William Friedkin was considered a difficult director and a jerk, but yet he was very, I, I guess because she was a little girl, I guess he had a soft side for kids, I guess. And uh, yeah. But despite like the direction that he had to do, like telling her about, well, he didn't really tell that you were master. He didn't like say right, those. Instead, right. just, uh, I guess, he, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he basically like said like words to like not using those words. Right, right. Yeah, or saying curse words. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also, I read that she says she didn't even like, she doesn't like horror movies either, Wendell Blair, despite how she's a big, iconic horror uh, Mm -hmm. person in a high, iconic horror movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, like, like I, I wanted, I forgot to bring this up about Father Karras, that ultimate sacrifice in the end that he does when, take me instead of her, and it's, Mm -hmm. it's like kind of brave, but also just great, because I guess maybe felt like he was older than her, this little girl is young and innocent, she had more to live in. He did, mm-hmm. and it, that's how you want to look at it, right? In a way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Any other things you want to bring about the extras that comes to mind that we want to touch upon, or? Um. No, I think that's it. All right. Also, I, again, did you ever see the sequels to the Exorcist? I didn't see any sequel. Uh, no. Well, I saw the second movie. It was a complete garbage and a skipper. It didn't make any sense on like why would they make? Again, it's another horror movie. Why did this need sequels? Yeah, you know what really surprised me too is that. A really talented director right. uh, directed the second movie, yes, John, and the, John Borman. And according to my friend Christian, he said that he was not a fan of the first Exorcist. Why hire a guy who did not mm-hmm. like the first Exorcist film? Yeah, I don't know. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but the only thing I will say is Linda Blair was very pretty in that movie. She was like, you know, older and grown up at that time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. so that doesn't say the movie from being from be better. Or but the up. third one's supposed to be good. Actually, yes. The third one, it's not great, but it's pretty good. Not, It's a decent, it's definitely an upgrade compared to the uh, the second movie. And the other crazy thing is, the book is not, it's based on a book by William Peter, uh, Peter Bl- Blatty. Bl- Blatty. It's called Legion. But because when they made the movie, a lot of student interference was uh, a problem with that film. They said, Make it a sequel to The Exorcist and not call it Legion. I guess maybe because they thought like no one would take that title seriously. Either or, that or they wouldn't know that it was related to The Exorcist. That's probably too yeah. also yeah. because yeah. Uh, in the book Legion, there is no exorcism. That was just thrown at the studio saying, put an exorcism scene. Mm-hmm. And well, I don't really want to spoil it though because you have to watch it to like mm-hmm. be a little surprised and also to see like how it has like some odd like cameos when you at least like not that this isn't a big spoiler right here, but Fabio and Patrick uh, Patrick Ewing have cameos in that film in a dream scene. Like, mm-hmm. what does this got to do with? The, like, what <laughs> you're gonna laugh at yourself? Like, what? Like, what odd cameos for uh, an Exorcist movie? Yeah, mm-hmm. especially Fabio and Patrick Ewing. Like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. The highlight to The Exorcist Three is Brad Dourif's performance. He does an amazing job in this movie. He should have been nominated for an Academy Award for his performance in this movie. In the future, I want to do a video about the uh, extra six sequels because I have no interest to do like solo on those. Right now, this is just about the first section, and just brief mentions about the extra six right. sequels. And also, there was also like a prequel in the 2000s with Stellan Skarsgård's character, who uh, the, based on the Max von uh, Saito character. I never saw that one, but from watching James Rolls' video, he explains about how like, that movie also had a lot of like studio interference production problem there's like two different cuts of the movie Mm -hmm. but again i I can't make a comment on that but it's interesting how like that was a prequel about max uh, von saito's character but again it's one of those films that sound like there was potential but the studio messed it up Mm -hmm. yeah and of course recently there was the exorcist uh non-believer i think it was called or yeah i think that was something like that don't quote me on it Mm -hmm. but this, again, I haven't seen it yet. It just came out recently. I just, I don't know. It's like, they're just pushing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. do we really have to, like, make... They are basically follow the same format, what they did with Halloween, where it uh, ignores this, the previous sequel. This just follows up the first Exorcist film. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure, like, why uh, uh, 
uh, Linda Blair did not come back yet. They bought back Ellen Burson's character. I mean, I know Linda Blair's retired, doesn't act that much anymore, but still, one would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. But you know they say, don't judge a uh, movie by its title, but mm -hmm. would you go see it? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I respect mm -hmm. that. And yeah. I was watching a video yesterday from a YouTuber I watched, Jennifer Vega, her thoughts and video, and she did a good job in the video giving her honest thoughts, but... I wrote to her saying, good job, but honestly, I'm just not sure if I'm in a rush to go see it like, desperately right away, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, maybe I'll see it when it comes out for renting. Possibly. Yeah. Alright, I guess that uh, wraps it up. Uh, mm -hmm. Happy Halloween, and still go watch The Exorcist, and enjoy a... Uh, still, like, be spooked out after all these years, or 50 years, how it's still going to be talked about the test of times, The Exorcist. That's right. So, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.